Habib ibn Mazahir was about the same age as Imam Hussein. They were childhood friends. When Imam Ali moved the capital to Kufa, Habib also moved to Kufa. He stayed on in Kufa and became a prominent citizen. He was a devout Shia. The first letter which Imam Hussein received inviting him to Kufa was signed by Habib ibn Mazahir. After Hazrat Muslim and Hazrat Hani bin Ulva were killed by Ibn Ziyad, Kufa was sealed off. No one could get in or out of the city without the governor's permission. Ibn Ziyad also started spreading the rumor that Imam Hussein had gone to Medina and that he was living there happily under the protection of Yazid. Even Imam Hussein's messenger, Qais ibn Mushir, who tried to take a letter to the citizens of Kufa, was arrested outside Kufa. He was tied and gagged and thrown from the roof of the palace to the ground three times. Ibn Ziyad succeeded in spreading terror in Kufa and silencing the people. Habib ibn Mazahir was heartbroken because he could not join Imam Hussein. He did not even know where Imam Hussein was. There were all sorts of rumors, but no one knew anything for certain. Imam Hussein had reached Karbala. Every day, Bibi Zena saw soldiers coming to join the camp of Umar al Saad, the commander of Yazid's army. On 4th Muharram, she came to Imam Hussein and said, Ya Akhi, why are all these soldiers coming? Imam replied, My dear sister, they're gathering to kill me. Bibi Zainab said, Brother, you have hardly 72 men with you while they are in thousands. Bibi Zainab had tears in her eyes as she added, Do you not have anyone ready to come to your help? Imam Hussein said, Falsehood can buy you many supporters. Truth has few friends. That very day, Imam Hussein wrote a letter to Habib ibn Mazahir, his childhood friend, telling him how Yazid's vultures were gathering to kill him. The letter was carried by a messenger who entered Kufa in the dark by climbing over the city walls. The messenger reached Habib's house as Habib, his wife and his young son were sitting down for breakfast. Habib read the letter, kissed it and tears began to flow down his cheeks. His wife asked him, what was wrong? Habib said, who would ever have thought that people would be so thirsty for the blood of the grandson of the Holy Prophet, whose name they utter in every adhan and in every salah? Habib instructed his servant to take his horse to a farm outside the city and wait for him there. If anyone should ask, the servant should say that he was taking the horse for grazing. At Asa, when most people were in the mosque, Habib slipped out of Kufa. He mounted his horse and galloped towards Karbala. Habib ibn Mazahir reached Karbala late in the evening. Imam Hussein greeted Habib with great affection. When Bibi Zainab heard that Habib had come, she asked Janab Fizza to convey her greetings to Habib. When Habib received the message, he began to stop, saying, How fortunate are the companions of Imam Hussein that the daughter of Fatima Zahra should honor them with greetings. On the fateful day of Ashura, between Zuhr and Asr, Habib ibn Mazahir rode into the battlefield. He fought bravely. Finally, he was overpowered. He fell to the ground. Imam Hussein rushed to him. Habib looked at Imam and said, O oh, the grandson of the Holy Prophet, please forgive this humble servant for not being able to give more than his unworthy life for you and Islam. Imam took Habib in his arms and cried, O oh, friend, O oh, my friend. Habib gave his life resting in his head on Imam's shoulder.